we are talking about meditation. And meditation has so many, um, it's one of those buzzwords, right? Just like yoga, yoga and meditation, yoga and meditation. And in fact, I can't get the words yoga and meditation off of my website. I have tried and it, they just won't go. Like, so yoga and meditation, they, they bring with them a lineage of thoughts, a culture, um, idea forms, and lots of um, restrictions for most of us on what they should look like, right? So when you ask yourself, what is what do you think meditation is? What do you say? Like, what is meditation to you? What does that mean? Um, for me, it's evolved over the years very much so. Because when I first started, I was very strict about it. And I felt like the correct way would be me sitting, you know, lotus position and having complete quiet Um and being able to connect in that silence and you know find find whatever messages are there. Um, for some people, that really works. That's a thing that is easy, or not easy, but is accessible for them. Not everybody is a quiet meditator. And so it's really important to remember that when you start tapping into your own unique style of meditation. Because at its root, all meditation is, is you allowing yourself to disconnect from your current every day and reconnect to your higher self. That's all. So think of it as pulling your plug out from one place, plugging it into another. There are millions of ways to accomplish this disconnect and reconnect. And sitting very quietly in specific positions is only one of them. So if you are not a sit quiet person, it's totally fine. A lot of people, and I'm just kind of run through the list of, of things, but a lot of people find that a moving meditation is wonderful for them. And a lot of people are involved in moving meditations and don't realize that they are doing it and therefore don't count it as meditation. Going for a walk is probably the easiest and best way to achieve a meditative state. If you've ever gone for a walk through a nice park, through the woods, through your yard, wherever it is, you are moving your body every time your foot hits the ground, you're creating rhythm with your cadence, you are connecting with earth energy, you are surrounded by nature and more elemental energy and earth energy, and you are open to the sky above. It's literally the perfect meditation. And as you walk, as you move your body, your energy is moved and circulated. And that movement and breathing, because you can breathe in a different way when you're walking, right? That movement and breathing is all the meditation you need. So if you're going for a walk, you can tell yourself, Today, I'm gonna to focus on my breath. And I'm going to be conscious of breathing in and breathing out. Develop some sort of a rhythm. And you walk for 20 minutes, that's a 20 minute meditation. It does not matter if you, you know, didn't see a purple guide with a top hat and receive some sort of special message. Um, the meditation, the magic of meditation is simply that disconnect and reconnect. And it's a recharge that's happening and a reset that's happening, whether or not you receive tangible messages or not. So that's also the important part. A lot of times we expect to receive very specific things from our meditation and that isn't always going to happen. So just remember, you have achieved what you need to achieve when you can get into that place where you're pulling out and docking in up here. So moving meditation is amazing. Practicing um, yoga or any type of slow flow movement like Tai Chi perhaps, also amazing for moving meditation. Some people love to go running, not me, but find their meditation through the running. So any kind of re repetitive movement is excellent for that meditative state. Now, those are all those things, right? 
but if we've if you've worked with me you know i'm a big proponent of guided visual med meditations i love them and i find for me that works best to you know get me to a place unfortunately for me when i am listening to a guided meditation i know it's a good one because about 30 seconds in i'm gone and i know i didn't fall asleep because as soon as whoever's guiding the meditation pulls me, you know, pulls it in and kind of closes it, I'm suddenly back. And then I'm angry because I missed all the cool stuff, right? But that's just how I do it. And I know that when I go off wherever I go, um, I'm doing some things that I need to do and I'm receiving messages I need to, to receive. Rose says, I love meditating while kayaking. Ooh, kayaking is such a beautiful meditation, um, especially alone. It's almost impossible to go kayaking and not feel like you are in sacred space, right? Just parting through the waters in sacred space. Mm, I love that. Swimming is also another beautiful one. So um, I'm going to talk to you a little about creating your own um, inner meditation atmosphere that you can use <clears throat> and tailor to whatever you want um, with yourself to create a more robust experience, okay? So we are going to kind of delve into the world of creative writing here because when you are creating your um, experience for meditation, you want to make sure that all of your senses are being involved in it, right? And as I'm saying this, um, I'm like, maybe I should make a meditation for you guys at some point. I'm not going to do a meditation right now because the last thing you guys need is to get nice and sleepy right before you do stuff in the morning. But here are the, the, top, the top things that I do when I create a guided meditation. First off, I set an intention that I want the user to experience, okay? And it's very simple all the time. It's something like I would love for the person who is listening to this meditation to receive a sense of peace and home or a sense of being very loved and supported or healing for their body something like that like just it and that's your container that's the container of your meditation all right then I um sorry my brain just like whoop, just went away so after that after you create your intention you create the landscape and I like to have a dynamic movement once you're in the landscape. So think of a very wide open space that can be easily manipulated. I usually use an open field, okay? So going with the open field, visualizing yourself in that open field, don't just leave it there. Think of all of the sensations that would happen to you and your body if you were standing in an open field. Feel the ground beneath your feet. Feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. Feel the breeze coming through, making your hair move a little bit. Smelling the beautiful fragrance of jasmine or other wildflowers as it wafts past you. Hear birds singing, crickets, cicadas. So feeling in that full sensory experience, touching on smell, sound, sight, and touch, and even taste if you want to bring that into it as well. So we're in this field, we're feeling our feet on the ground, on the soft grass. We are smelling the wildflowers, we're feeling the sun on our skin, we're feeling the breeze moving past us, and we're hearing the birds and the cicadas. We are in that field. Then, once you're there, I like to take one more dynamic journey into another place to assist in getting into whatever zone you're looking to get into. So, whereas we have this field, sometimes there's a very beautiful old tree. And the only thing we do is go walk over to that tree and sit beneath it, press our back against its strong, beautiful trunk, and allow ourselves to plug in to that energy. This creates a way for your mind and body to connect 
in that other space and really feel like you're in it. And it's dynamic and it's expansive. Now, once you're in that, you can just stay. Get yourself there, sit with your back against the tree and just stay. Invite the energies around you to play and dance and just relax and be in that space. Um, allow whatever comes to come to you. A lot of times when I have somebody sitting with their back against the tree in that space and they really just allow like their imagination to go, things will happen like an owl may fly by or a horse appears or a person or just words. You just never know, perhaps music. All of these things will come into the landscape that you create, this container that you've created um, to hold all of the magical messages that are waiting for you. And while you're in that space, you don't need to overthink anything. You don't need to connect any dots. You don't need to um, you know, figure stuff out. You're just absorbing the experience and trusting that you are going to be receiving whatever you need from here and you'll remember what you need to remember. Um, Consciously, I hardly remember anything um, unless it's like really rammed into my head, but I've started to understand that that doesn't mean it doesn't integrate into what I'm doing. So just trust the experience and don't force it. Um, I love doing this. Another, another like container or atmosphere that I love to do is besides the field, there's a specific beach that I have in my memory. It's called Happy Beach. And this beach for me is like my safe and happy place. So sometimes in meditation, I will picture that place and bring myself into that awareness with all of the sensory details, and then I'll just hang out there and wait for things to happen. So you're basically creating a location that makes you feel engaged and safe and calm, and then inviting the energies in to be with you during your meditation. So just some things for thought. If you end up trying this for yourself, I'd love to hear how it goes for you. Um, and I will, I think I have a few of these meditations available. So I will post a meditation in the Facebook group for you guys to try out um, because they're fun. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on meditation. I'm seeing Christine saying she's joining a kayaking group and ooh, that's gonna be nice. Kayaking in Sarasota. Mm-hmm. I bet you're gonna be able to hang with some dolphins and that would be incredible. And hi Valerie. So that's my spiel on the meditation. Um the biggest the biggest tip I have for you is, in this and everything is don't push yourself. Don't measure yourself against something else, somebody else. Don't um, put pressure on yourself because of something you've read. Um, hi, Mariah. Just trust your own journey here and trust that whatever, whatever way you're able to unplug and reconnect is perfect for you. So moving meditation, creating your sensory experience and your hangout place where you just get there and you chill. Um, try that out and let me know how it goes. I am off to do some exciting things today. I am finishing up the channeling for the reactivation, which starts next week and I can't believe it. Well, because I can't believe it's October next week, but if you don't know about reactivation, you can click the Let's Connect Thingy, and that'll take you to my website and you can find out about it there. But reactivation is a four week system and it is not a, you know, meet with me course. It's, it's sent to you, you get the whole thing, you do it at your own pace. And it's basically 10 to 15 minute videos, five days a week with me. We drink our coffee together and through my voice, you will receive light codes and activations that will help align you with the current new earth energies that are coming in. And each of the four weeks has a theme. So I think the first one is, is energy and we chat about those things. So at the end of four weeks, you're going to have absorbed a lot of information that will just be part of you and you will have received huge upgrades. And then every night you'll have a meditation that helps you integrate everything that you've gotten and helps you sleep at night, hopefully. So speaking of meditation, 
if you sign up for reactivation, you will get four of those um, for the evening time with me. So you'll be able to experiment with that. So I'm super excited for that to launch on the first. A lot of you guys have already pre-ordered. Thank you so much for doing that. Love you guys. And if you are part of Restoration, you get 25% off, which is a hefty discount. <laughs> So if you're interested, you can send me a message to learn more or you can click the link. I love you guys. I hope you have an awesome Wednesday. Um, Mariah, if you click that link, you'll, you can learn about reactivation or just send me, send me a direct message and I'll, we can chat about it. I hope you have an awesome Wednesday. I will see so many of you this week. So I'm very excited about that. I'll see you tomorrow for the fairy circle and Friday for women's circle. So Yay me, enjoy this beautiful day. Mwah.